Hey guys, MC Fixit here. Today we're working on a G Star Sidewinder by Innova. This is a used disc, but it's in really good shape. Has one of these jelly bean stamps, which are really, really cool. So I do want to make sure we can still see this stamp, which you normally can with Pro Chem and Die. Let's go ahead and go over the tools and supplies that you're going to need for this. You're going to want your disc. Know what color it is. It does help with what dyes you do or do not want to use. And this is kind of a gummy plastic, which will do really good. And so we just want to make sure we can still see the stamp afterwards, because uh, I do like the stamp on this one. And so here are the supplies you're going to need. A Mr. Clean Magic Eraser works really well for getting stuff off with Dawn dish soap and a little bit of water. You can really clean it up well. Make sure you have paper towels and gloves. You also want some press and seal to kind of cover up your dish uh, while it's dying. Also, you'll want uh, toothpicks, some acetone. And make sure you got some clear glue that's really helpful uh, to make this die happen because all of your dies will sit on that bed. And these are Pro Kim and dies. Love these dies. Really good stuff. They last a long time. Link is up in the description in the card right there. You can click on and find out how I mix these with acetone, which just work really well. You're going to want these little mason jars and the pie pan that's big enough or some kind of a dish. Nine inches or bigger is normally good. You always want to check your disc and make sure you have lots of eyedroppers and label them so you know exactly which ones you're putting in your glue bed. Here's a setup that I like to do. Uh, go ahead and get the stuff out of your way that you're not going to need right away. Um, and you want to also make sure you have acetone available to wash things off if needed. Get your clear glue. Go ahead and spin the cap off and get it ready to pour in. Um, this one has been used pretty much, so it's not really full. Uh, but if it is full, go ahead and lift that pie pan up. Get it nice and close. If it's been used a lot, you can just go ahead and pour really slowly. The goal of pouring slowly so you don't get a bunch of air bubbles. You do not want air bubbles. They make slight imperfections inside of your dye, and you just don't want that. And so we'll go through in a second and make sure there is no air bubbles. But again, try your best to go slow. There's no need to rush anything we're doing today. Uh, make sure you put the cap back on, tighten it down tight so you can reuse that later on. Go ahead and grab a toothpick. Look for any air bubbles. You may need to go to different angles uh, depending on your lighting and what kind of pie pan you have. This one's a clear one, which sometimes is helpful, sometimes is not. You'll see I'm doing kind of a weird thing. A lot of times you'll see people poke them. I have found that a lot of times if you just go back and forth, you will pop them. Um, sometimes don't go super vigorous on it, but a lot of times uh, there were a bunch of air bubbles for some reason on this one little portion, and I just kind of pulled them all to the edge and they all kind of pop as they go to the edge, which works really well. I have spent a lot of time sometimes just literally poking down, but this method seems to be working really well recently. And so just dragging them, you can poke them as well, uh, but get the clear glue, toothpicks, and you'll be all set for what you need to do. You want to look at your disc and think of what colors are going to look good on this disc. Because a lot of times when you add colors together, they will mix. Um, and also when you're putting colors together that are different colors uh, that the, the dyes don't necessarily mix but it does give different colorations with your disc color um, you can also use some kind of blow tool method if you want or compressed air uh, we're gonna focus on toothpicks today so we're gonna go start off with flag red uh, go slow don't put it down all the way down in your dish that has your dyes uh, that mason jar just get the very top of it and uh, then we're going to do some flag blue in here. Love flag blue, and I just kind of spilled it everywhere. I guess I like it so much. But it's such a great dye, and it'll show up really well on this orange disc. So it's okay. I spilled a little bit. Um, go slow. Take your time. Here's some pansy, which is kind of a dark purple. Um, also really like this on disc. Um, and so we're just going to go kind of fill in the voids, even though I just spilled a lot of blue out. Um, and these colors don't really run together with this pro Kim and dye which is what I like we'll put a little bit more fire red right over here just kind of fill in some of these spots 
And with the kind of the swirl effect we're going to go to today, I do want the center of the disc to kind of show up a little bit. Uh, that orange color to show up and still shine through. Um, but you'll kind of see as I'm going along exactly how I'm doing that. You see I'm giving the dyes the ability to kind of spread out. Um, so you're not putting them directly in each other's bubble, but you're just kind of going right next to it. And you just keep dropping whatever colors you like. You get to kind of be the choice and the director of this. And then I'm going to put some orange in the middle. I know the disc is already orange, but it'll just help with mixing. So I'm going to put pretty much that whole dropper full of orange in the middle, which kind of looks like red on this screen. Um, but when you put it down, that orange will look really good on the orange disc and uh, just kind of help accent it just a little bit better. And so we're going to go ahead and start mixing this together. You're going to grab your toothpick and your toothpick becomes kind of your mixing tool. Again, you can use lots of different things. Toothpicks seem to work really well for me. And so I'm going to start in the center and I'm going to pull or push out towards the edges. That's going to give it the kind of effect that you saw on the uh, thumbnail of this video. And so you just kind of pull, wipe off each time. You want it to be clean as you're going from that orange outward. You're going to be trying to go through each one of the little bubbles of dye you just did. That will give it the effect that this has. Uh, if you don't go through each of them, you're just going to get that blob effect. But this is going to kind of have not necessarily a stars and a five-sided star or a six-sided star, but just kind of give you that effect of it. The, the dye is kind of busting out from the middle to the edges, which is actually what I would kind of want here. And it'll just kind of give it a really neat effect. Um, there's lots of ways to do this. This is one of the ways I found that seems very successful. Make sure you're wiping it each time. If you have an area that's like pretty much red or green or whatever color you have, I didn't do green in this one, but you get what I'm saying. You can actually swirl those colors together like I'm doing here. Um, and it kind of gives it a cool effect. And try not to pull too much of the other color next to it in. Uh, but I try to get just a touch and it kind of gives it a really cool swirl effect. So you kind of have that starburst in the center uh, with some swirl effects on the side. And so that's how I wanted to do this, and I think it looks pretty cool. You can also break the end of your toothpick. Not all the way off, but just kind of, and then you pull with that, and it gives it a wider starburst effect. Um, a little trick I found out the other day when I was just kind of messing around is that gives it just a really big, wide kind of starburst E effect as you're kind of pulling it down and through. Um, I could leave some of the smaller ones, but if you want some bigger ones for a little bit more defined, or if your die seems to be kind of rushing back towards the center, this also works really well for that. If you want it to kind of either stay clear or stay a certain color, you can kind of pull that glue um, and kind of get almost even underneath the die to kind of give it that effect of it being either clear or that orange color that I put on it here. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more orange color because it look is looking more and more clear as I'm pulling that dye away. And this will kind of just make it more uniform as I'm pulling and I'm going to swirl this really quick. And then as you're pulling it towards the edges. And I'm really liking how this looks. So you have to decide where you want your dye to go. I'm really liking the center. I might just swirl it just a little bit more to get it just a little bit better from what I had and to make sure it kind of just looks exactly how I want. And then I am probably going to add a little bit more dye kind of around the edges. There's some spots that are kind of showing through a little bit more than what I want. I've done a lot of different things already on this dye job. So sometimes you do have to just add a couple more drops here and there to get the effect you want. And I did put a couple of these in the middle of other blobs, which may kind of look weird, but it's going to give it just kind of a really unique, cool effect. Um, I'm not mixing it together to where it changes the color, but just to where it swirls it in a little bit. And so I just flip the toothpick around because I don't want a big one. And just sitting there and spinning in a small little circle, um, just going on the edge and in the middle and pulling a little bit of color from the surrounding areas into those blobs of dye that I just put down, which is going to give the effect that I want. And so that just gives you that ability to be creative. Um, if you don't like how it's looking, to kind of almost start over uh, by adding more dye or by changing some things up. That is one thing I love about dyes is you trying to just making it your own. 
and make sure you clean everything off and clean the disc off one last time in case you got any fingerprints or anything else on it, any kind of glue or anything. And then you have to do something kind of strange as you're doing it. I like to use my middle finger and sometimes my index fingers. First thing you want to do is look to make sure it's exactly where you want your stamp to sit so you can spin it or you can move your die or your disc around in your hand. But I think I want that stamp to sit right there. So I like to flip it in my hands and have my index middle finger together and you're going to kind of put it at an angle. I like to put the right side down first. You can actually watch the glue go towards the left side. Uh, but you're kind of doing it about a 45 degree angle as you're setting this down. Um, you're going to be able to allow no air bubbles to form underneath the disc between that and the glue and the die. And so it's a little harder to see because this is not a clear disc. If you go to some of my videos that are clear, uh, you can actually see the glue moving from the right to the left, which is kind of helpful. Um, and you're going to let this sit for 24 hours. Take your time. Let it sit. Don't give up on it. Let it sit for at least 24 hours. Grab some press and seal. Put it around the edge of your disc. I do lots of videos, repair videos, die disc videos, and my my garage gets kind of messy, and so I like to clean it, uh, make sure it's clean with that die glue bed. Um, also, clean off each and every one of your eyedroppers after you get done, and make sure you tighten up each and every one of your mason jars. Thank you. 